Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's sitting. There is a tradition that when a person sits down to meditate in Buddhism or sits down to participate in a retreat, that one would first uh, begin with one's attention very wide, broad, out across the lands to appreciate and be grateful for the wide support that uh, makes it possible for us to be in this spot, in this very particular spot where we're sitting in order to meditate and practice. And this idea of starting very, very wide and then beginning to come in closer and closer until we're sitting in this body and this body becomes our meditation hall or or this body becomes our temple or the sacred ground in which we navigate our practice. And that wide, wide kind of beginning of appreciation, I've gone out as far as to the universe, the wide universe, the sense of that goes beyond the stories of even this galaxy or this world or this week or whatever is happening and appreciate the vastness within which uh, we have been, I have been participating, this, these atoms and participating for so long and the amazing process that has brought, that supported what's, po- what's possible has come together here. And then to appreciate the unseen and seen uh, uh, processes and forces on this earth of our own and how they support us and have made possible this life of ours and uh, our life here. And to value and appreciate and uh, have certain gratitude in spite of all the challenges this globe has these days in our human family, to uh, also to appreciate that we are supported uh, on this planet in so many different ways by the forces of nature and other things. And then they come in closer and appreciate and value that there are human beings in this world who are the helpers, who are the supporters, who in seen and unseen ways make our our daily life possible and uh, make all our, uh, many of our needs met and supported and our ancestors who very efforts to live and pass on their genes and their wisdom, make it possible also you know, here, they're pointing, all things pointing here, because this here in your body is where we are. That's where the lived experience of all this wide support is we can experience for ourselves. And then um, to come closer in, closer in, and to feel the more immediate people who maybe have made it possible for us to sit and meditate this morning. And then to come closer in and appreciate this body that we have. Have some gratitude or at least appreciation that this body is an amazing, uh, amazing thing. This body that we have Uh, is within it. It contains and processes and holds and supports a tremendous process of physical, psychological, emotional, and spiritual processing and opening and unfolding, if we allow it. If we get too close into the mind and we think of ourselves consciously or unconsciously as the story-making person, as who we are is the mind's capacity to make stories, to judge, to make conclusions, to analyze, to predict the future, to remember the past, and we limit ourselves to that world, it can get sticky very quickly. But the here is where if we can open up and let the body be, be a being, an embodied being, and as broad and as wide as you can in this body. So sitting upright or 
taking a posture that's appropriate for you that expresses some little bit more alertness than you normally would have. And a posture that allows you to relax. The principle about sitting upright is to have the spine be alert and then let the muscles all around the spine and the shoulders to hang from that upright spine. Gently closing your eyes and taking a few long, slow, deep breaths. Breathing in deeply and then gently extending the exhale as far as it's comfortable for you. Inhaling and feeling the body stretch and open. And exhale, settling into this body, relaxing. And this deeper breath at the beginning is also a reminder that this is the real meditation hall. This is the location of practice that everything else is supporting, that everything else in some way comes to rest, comes to resolution, comes to awakening here in this body. And then letting your breathing return to normal. And take a few moments to scan around your body and to notice if there's any obvious places that you can relax. Maybe as you exhale, you can relax your faces of your muscle, of your faces, the muscles of your face. Perhaps you can relax and soften around the shoulders. Perhaps softening and relaxing in the heart, heart area. Softening in the belly, letting the belly hang forward and a little bit be settled down into the pelvic cavity. And perhaps there's some broad global way of relaxing the whole body no longer bracing against life or appreciating that in some way or other it's a job well done that now that you've arrived in your meditation. Not an easy thing for people to do. What a good thing that you're doing sitting here now for these minutes. And then, if it feels most comfortable for you, you can just let your attention be with your body in a global way. Just open, relax. Whatever way your body appears that allows you to feel grounded and centered. And keep coming back to that resting there.
And then to, if you'd like, to feel and recognize how the body experiences breathing. Allow the body to experience breathing. Where is the breathing experience most alive for you or most pleasant for you or clear? might feel, experience the breathing mostly in the chest as it moves, mostly in the belly as it moves, or perhaps the air going in and out through the nostrils. Or more globally, all of this together If you have trouble with being with your breathing, finding it, staying connected to it, you might put your hand on your belly, or maybe your chest, to feel the movements there. And then let your hands, your loving hand, remind you for a few minutes to to experience and be, to accompany your breathing. One of the little tricks, keys for this practice of mindfulness is to be happy every time you can start again. So if the mind wanders off in thought, begin again with your breathing as if it's the first time.
perhaps every time you exhale, to quiet your thinking, soften, softening your thinking, softening the thinking muscle. And if it's easy enough to let go of your thoughts as you exhale and let go into the body breathing.
relaxing the thinking muscle, quieting your thoughts just a little bit, and opening your awareness globally to your body. Kind of wide, soft awareness, attention or glow or vibration of the, of the whole body, whatever way you experience it. Sitting here in this spot. Your body is always in the present moment. Your thinking mind is often not. It's wandering off and thinking about the past and the future. Your thinking mind is reacting and making stories. The body is wise. The body is, can hold all things, has amazing capacities to trust, entrust yourself to the whole body. And then within the body, to feel the body breathing. And as we come to the end of this sitting, to take a few moments again to experience your body, experience how you are right now, and consider any of the ways that you've benefited from this meditation session. Are you a little calmer? a little bit more present and aware, and aware, a little bit more connected to yourself, or connected to something valuable within you, which is bigger than who you are. Or you're a little bit more patient, or a little bit more understanding of the challenges that you have or challenges in meditation. Of all these benefits, how can, how can that be a, a support, a, an encouragement, a way in which as you go through your day to day, you could bring benefit and care and attention to how you live, how you take care of yourself, how you take care of the place that you live, how you might be caring for if there's people you live with, 
or people that are in the neighborhood or out broad or out in the world? Are there simple ways that how you are now can inspire you to make the world a better place? And then to end the sitting, you might again take a few long, slow, deep breaths. Connect to your body. Feel this place that you're sitting, meditating. The contact with your pillow, your cushion, chair. And then As you wish, you can now open your eyes to end the meditation. I won't ring a bell because the bell ended up out of reach for me sitting here. So... So again, good morning, and um, I appreciate the chance to be meditating here with you on this Sunday morning, and some of you have been doing these morning sittings Monday through Friday, and I appreciate that you came back for this special Sunday morning sitting that is partly being done to support an online retreat that started yesterday. And I appreciate that there are so many people who are interested in meditation, about the practice, mindfulness, and that even in this time when we're so separate and we we don't come together physically, we are together in heart, we are together in purpose, we are together um, in spirit of practice. So thank you. What I'd like to talk about a little bit today is um, a background or overview of the topic of the five faculties. Uh, Tomorrow and for the next coming week, I'm gonna talk about the fifth of the five faculties, that of wisdom. And the first four are usually translated as faith, as effort, mindfulness, and concentration. And um, and wisdom is a you know is a lofty topic in many ways, but the way that wisdom operates in Buddhism, it wisdom arises out of the practice. It arises out of the body. It arises out of the support of the other faculties. So as, as our faith, our confidence becomes, brings us into the present moment, as our capacity for engagement brings us into the present moment here with this body, as mindfulness begins to awaken our capacity for attention not just as a cognitive ability, but awareness that is also grounded in the body. And as we develop a capacity for the focus that concentration is, we awaken much more than focus because samadhi, concentration, is also a very much an embodied experience of wholeness, of unification. So the five faculties, they're called faculties because they are faculties or capacities that we all have. We all have the capacity to have faith or confidence. We all have the capacity for effort. We all have capacity for uh, attention, awareness, for focus, and for wisdom. And uh, as we begin bringing to, uh, strengthening the first four, it's almost as if it's natural for wisdom to surface. Uh, it's you don't have to go and read the books of Buddhism for Buddhist wisdom. 
if you want to become wise in Buddhism, you want to read the book in your own heart, the book here in your own body. This is where wisdom is born. And so to have the ability to come back in a clear way, an open way, a dedicated way, maybe even a deep embodied way into our experience of the moment so that our natural faculty, our natural capacity for wisdom can operate. And this idea that these are capacities and even wisdom is a capacity that we all inherently have that we can kind of clarify or make strong or bring, let it really work in its natural way uh, speaks to the idea that uh, we don't have to be the one who is, the, is engineering our life or our practice. We're not the one who has to uh, figure it out or make something happen or avoid something. We create the conditions that allows this natural capacity to arise And one of those conditions is a deep trust that there is a wisdom that arises out of the whole psychophysical system, arises out of the body. And a lot of the reason we practice mindfulness is not only to be mindfully present and see what's going on, but also in a certain way to get out of our own way, to allow this capacity to support us rather than being up in the control tower, figuring it out and planning and analyzing and am I there yet or is, you know, have, is this the right form of experience? Am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? Um, to be very, to learn to kind of soften and relax the control tower of self, of me, myself and mine and that's all up to me and I have to, and I'm the victim or it's, I'm having a hard time or I have to do it or look how great I am. To soften and relax this part of the whole psychophysical system And that process begins classically in Buddhism with the first faculty. And it's often translated into English as faith. And uh, I like sometimes the word trust. Um, The kind of nice middle way is confidence. That we have some confidence in our ability to be present. Confidence in the value of waking up to our experience here. Confidence in a path of practice that as we practice mindfulness and concentration, it keeps opening up this Dharma book that's in ourselves. It's a safe, it can be, it becomes a safe place. It becomes a very supportive place to be here in the present moment, to find ourselves grounded here. It's a process to get there. It's not easy. And that's why faith is somehow important. Some people react to the English word faith it can be uh, imply some idea that you have to have faith in some doctrine that you can't believe in and something you don't know. Um, the idea you have to believe something. Uh, I love the fact that the word believe in its original usage in, uh, uh, in the old days, long time ago, a thousand years ago or something, uh, meant um, uh, to love, to love something, to hold something dear. It didn't mean to believe a tenant or a belief, like a cognitive thing. Uh, it meant where you, where you put your heart in, what you, be, what you loved. And so this idea of, of faith, this capacity for love or care or kindness or, or you know, here is what I love. I love myself. I love to wake up. I love to be able to bring compassion and care to whatever is happening here. I love the support of uh, the refuges, Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha. The fact that I'm not doing this alone. We're supported by so much. So to uh, allow faith to somehow be here to support us. And you know it's supporting you if you begin to rest or settle into this body. To make effort and it's a, this effort, this capacity for effort is a little bit different than what it is for many people where effort, for some people when they hear it, you have to make effort, you get tight and you have to, it's like work and it's going to be exhausting. Uh, one of the paradoxes of, um, that this can be kind of explained is we make a lot of effort to relax. So if the focus is to relax, 
then you can't strain or push or get tight or work a lot to relax. But we're diligent, we're persistent in staying here, relaxing into the body. And relaxing into the body doesn't mean becoming too limp. It means softening and relaxing the attention. So the attention, so we rest in our body as our body, you know, keeps us upright, perhaps, or And so this effort to come back and the effort is a relaxing effort, a softening effort, as long as we don't fall asleep. Uh, If uh, we are too tired or too dull, then that effort is good to kind of recognize or wake up the alertness of attention as well. And this balance of alertness and relaxation. But without some bringing ourselves to the cushion, the effort to bring ourselves to the cushion, the effort to begin again, begin again if the mind wanders off, Um, you know, there's no practice. And the art of that effort is how to make that effort something that you enjoy, something that's nice and supportive, that you look forward to the effort. Every time your mind wanders off, you come back in such a kind way, such a supportive way, or such a easeful way, that the very way that you come back is you, you can't believe your good luck that you get to come back as opposed to, oh no, I wandered off in thought. Oh no, terrible me, I'm not doing it right. And then it doesn't even feel good to come back. I've done this where I jerk my mind back, I pounce my mind back, and it doesn't really feel good. And then mindfulness, to, um, to be present for the experience, to trust our capacity to be aware, an awareness which was very, very simple. If it's not simple, it's not aware. And then samadhi, concentration faculty, uh, uh, I'd like to just say it very simply, something about it today, is that um, samadhi can be, under, can be maybe understood as a unification process, um, bringing everything together, gathering together all our capacities to be settled here on our body, on our breathing, on whatever the attention is going to. And one way to come to that kind of uh, unification is the mantra, uh, this too. And this works very well for mindfulness too, also. And that is this too, we have to include in the awareness. This too is included. Not included so we think about it, but this too is included in the kind of silent or quiet attention of mindfulness. This too, and this gathering together. And to have all these capacities beginning to settle over the days and over the weeks of practice, even the years of practice, that allows something very deep to begin uh, um, uh, uh, capacity for, for uh, wisdom, for discernment, for understanding, for insight to begin happening. But not something that we're so responsible for, but something more that reveals itself to us. Because all the conditions are in place for the mind's capacity for wisdom to operate. And that'll be the topic, the wisdom faculty, uh, for these next few days. And I look forward to uh, sharing uh, what I have learned about these topics and and, and practice them together with you. So thank you very much for now, and um, I look forward, very much forward to our next time together. Thank you.